This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. Today I have a special guest, the global CEO of a company that needs no introduction. It's the biggest name when it comes to sports bikes and one of the style icons in biking world. I have Gabriel Del Tosho, the CEO of Ducati. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. I'm really proud and happy being here together with you, together with our Indian friends. Okay, so this is, uh, you've just launched your bikes in India. So what are your India plans going ahead? First of all, I'm very proud of being, being here and launch in India our products. It is uh, really a big opportunity. Believe that India is becoming a very interesting country around the world, already did a lot of improvements. Our GDP is growing quite rapidly and the attitude of the customer is really becoming very interesting. Talk about your joint venture partner. You've uh, tied up with uh, one, of the, uh, one of the companies which uh, ex has expertise in retailing and distributing uh, luxury brands and luxury uh, brands like Porsche, DNG. Why not go for a joint venture partner of, uh, with an automobile company? But first of all, because we are proud of our independence. We are an independent company uh, owned by an Italian private equity. Right now there is a public offer in Italy for the remaining share and that will be concluded much probably within uh, the end of beginning of June. And then, because we believe for products like our products, that are special products, because you know, our products are suitable for customers that are interested in quality, that are interested in superior performances, they are interested uh, in style products, in the appearance, in the, in the style of the product, in the Italian style of the product. And uh, when we studied the possibility to enter uh, the uh, Indian market, we concluded that the ideal combination was uh, to be together with a company that was skilled in promoting uh, luxury products. They are promoting very well luxury cars, they are promoting very well luxury Italian goods. So I guess it's an ideal combination. Uh, talking about uh, Ashish Chaudhary, whom you've tied up with, what are the kind of assistance you will give to his company? Are you going to be uh, just uh, selling them the bikes and re leave the rest to them? Or are you going to be actively involved in marketing and helping them sell the uh, products? This is, was never our philosophy. We never leave alone uh, our distributor. Uh, in this case, especially in this case, we understand that uh, the uh, Indian market is a challenge for him, is a challenge for us. We side by side uh, to him, uh, we really want uh, to show commitment uh, to this market, going step by step, uh, because objective for this year is relatively small. Our plan is to sell no more than 50 units uh, by the end by the end of uh, 2008 in India. But what it is important is to sell 50 units to 50 happy customers and to offer to them superior services in terms of after sales, in terms of maintenance, and in terms even in training how to use the bike, how to take really the best uh, uh, enjoyable performance for the bike. Mm, so, but uh, how do you go, how, what are your plans for selling these 50 bikes? What are the kind of marketing campaigns that you've got? Are you planning to bring uh, something, a, a marketing campaign around MotoGP? Is that one of the biggest assets that you have? Is that something that you're looking no, at? No, definitely. Uh, our name is well known in the world because of our racing activity. You mentioned MotoGP. I take the opportunity to repeat once again that last year we were so happy because we won the MotoGP World Championship after 34 year, 34 year of Japanese dominance, so good results. In addition to that, there is a Superbike World Championship. We won uh, 14 World Championship, and this year we are in a very good position because our rider, uh, Troy Bell is another Australian, because it looks like Australians are very popular in Ducati. Uh, we have the Australian rider, Casey Stoner in MotoGP, and uh, Troy Bell is uh, in uh, Superbike. He's doing very well. He won uh, four races out of six. So, so. MotoGP seems to be a passion of, of yours. I mean, you, you, yeah. you're, very, you're very excited about it. 
Yeah, I'm very excited about yeah. that. And it's very, it's very important for us because, you know, somebody asked me why you are, we are in a racing activity. should tell you for three reasons. First of all, for the pleasure being there. But the reasons are the, the following three. The first one, because of the technology. You know, we are testing the technology, we are testing the know-how in the racing activity. Second reason is uh, the teamwork. Mm -hmm. You know, to be in racing activity, you need a passionate, motivated team of people that work well together. And the third one, because of the publicity, because of the notoriety, uh, we are in the race, our name is well known around the world. I cannot imagine how much I have to spend in advertising campaign or in publicity to have such kind of eco, of, uh, of reputation of our, of our name. One of that bike uh, to Brad Pitt. Okay. <laughs> so but this is just, just, one, just so an example. Moving, moving from MotoGP to something more, uh, more uh, dull about pricing. Now, uh, as you talked about how Ducati is a premium brand and it is, it's a very cool brand as you would want to call it. Uh, is that one of the reasons why you priced your bike at such a premium and is there a chance that the Indian consumers can ever see the prices falling and becoming more affordable? Being a cool company is not a reason to price aggressively. We price aggressively because our bikes has a value because it costs more than the other bikes, because the solution that we bring in the bike are more expensive than the other. It's the same comparison in between a Japanese supercar or an Italian supercar. It's going without saying the Italian supercar costs more, but it's a different animal, it's a different product. That's, it's not because we are a cool company, because we win in the MotoGP that we price uh, at high, high level, uh, we put at a high price our product. So, but do you, see, do, do you, see, uh, do you see prices coming down uh, in the I future? don't know. For sure, for super bikes, it will be almost impossible because we want, uh, we are investing to maintain innovation and to maintain superior performances. Okay. So, uh, Yamaha and Suzuki have not uh, entered the super bike segment in India in a big way and they haven't made the splash that you've made. What is the reason why you see, why you, why you see a market and they don't and why your competition is still not be, being bullish about it? I'm not familiar with their strategy, so I cannot comment on why they are not entered or why they enter in a different way. I can only comment that why we took a decision because we took this decision because we believe that the, the Indian market will be mature in three four years time from now it's not yet mature but we have the seeds the seeds is here the market is ready because the level of money in the country because of the evolution of your GDP because of the fact that there are more and more Indians traveling around the world and coming back with different experience because it's a society that is going in the direction of even the pleasure of the life so we have decided it was the right moment to arrive, to create a platform and to be ready in the future to take advantage. Okay, and so what are the kind of competition you see in this, in this segment in India? Do you see any uh, competition? Frankly speaking, I don't believe that we have competition from the other motorbikes, even because we are not aiming to compete with them in terms of number. Uh, our ideal customer are people coming from uh, uh, Porsche car or Ferrari car, or luxury Italian, uh, Italian uh, goods uh, or Italian uh, uh, dresses, mm. uh, clothes and uh, so on. So is, uh, there's also this talk about now Harley Davidson has said that they are finally entering India and there's possibility that they would be coming here in, in 12 months time. But they've been given certain benefits by the government, some, some certain duty structures have been relaxed for them specifically. Are you expecting that kind of relaxation by the government ever? Have you ever talked to them? And if that were to materialize, would the prices come down? In due time, we will talk with them. Now it's too early because, uh, as I said, uh, to achieve uh, these kind of advantages, we should offer something. Uh, and uh, having in mind uh, a target of only 50 bikes uh, is too early. Uh, we are constantly looking at the opportunities in this market because uh, we are even sourcing some components from India. So as soon as our sourcing activity will be stronger than today, we'll be probably ready to talk with your government. Okay, and what kind of components are you sourcing from and which would, which would be a kind of company? We are sourcing for the moment some interior parts of the engine, some key parts of the engine are sourced here, and we are now considering even some other elements. At this moment, we'll take a short break and we'll be back with Gabriel to discuss what's been brewing between a certain Indian company and Ducati. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. <laughs> 